Uh, yes, please. Okay. You have a 45-year-old gentleman presenting with uh, history of uh, difficulty in passing urine and um, weak stream and nighttime frequency. How are you going to evaluate him? I will see him in the dedicated uh, Lutzer clinic. Uh, I will take a, a history from the patient about avoiding symptoms, uh, storage urinary uh, symptoms, uh, any associated post-mortuation tripling or dysuria. I will ask also about uh, uh, any incontinence. Uh, uh, I will ask about his any red flag uh, symptoms like uh, hematuria, recurrent UTI, uh, uh, pain. Um, I will uh, check the patient uh, status of the bowel, um, his sexual function. I will ask about his medical history, uh, any uh, medical comorbidities or the use of uh, any medication or phytotherapy. I will check any previous surgery or radiotherapy. I will check a patient uh, uh, drinking habit, any smoking. And, uh, um, and then I will examine the patient in the presence of a uh, chaplain with the patient consent. Um, uh, mainly looking uh, for any uh, palpable bladder, examine the genitalia for any phimosis, uh, meatitis stenosis, um, hypospadias, any palpable nodule in the uh, uh, urethra, and then uh, I will examine the testes and examine uh, uh, the prostate uh, via DRE. I will arrange for the patient to have a urine. I will give the patient the IPSS uh, uh, IPSS form to fill in and also the uh, bladder dairy three days bladder dairy i will uh, arrange for urine dip stick i will arrange for the patient to have a fluoride and the bladder scan while he is in the um in the clinic and then i take it from there okay he has no medical comorbidities he's uh, quite happy otherwise except for is voiding LUTS. examination showed fairly flat prostate maybe 20 to 25 cc no other physical examination findings significant. IPS is 28 out of 35. Quality of life 4 out of 6. He is quite bothered. Eurofluometry showed a maximum flow rate of 11 ml per second. He voided 350 ml with 130 ml residue. Okay, I want to see also the, the pattern of the flow rate, which may give me an idea about the cause. Because in this patient, I am concerned about the possibility of uh, urethral stricture because he is relatively young so i want to see whether the uh, flow uh, pattern is, is box like which is suggested of stricture okay the flow pattern showed obstructive pattern there is a gradual rise and decrease but the peak is quite low there is no sign of box pattern or urethral stricture okay so um so and there is there is no history before of any uh, instrumentation or no. any sti no instrumentation. Okay. So in this patient, um, I will assume since there is nothing suggestive in the history um, of uh, possibility of urethral stricture, there is no history of any uh, possible neuropathic bladder, then I will think that this may be an early onset of uh, blood due to prosthetic enlargement. So I'll give the patient uh, lifestyle advice. And uh, since his uh, symptoms are um, uh, severe symptom according to the uh, IPSS, I will offer him a tamsulosin therapy. Okay, he is trying tamsulosin. He has some improvement in his urinary symptoms, but he's quite bothered with absence of ejaculation. Why this happens? Um, so lack of ejaculation uh, with tamsulosin due to failure of emission. <coughs> Uh, which is uh, one of the known side effects of tamsulosin therapy. Okay, so how are you going to treat him now? So, unfortunately, this side effect may happen with other alpha blocker. However, it's uh, occur more frequently with tamsulosin because it is a specific alpha-1A. So, uh, if the patient is happy to try another alpha blocker like alpha zosin, which may associate with less incidence of this uh, a problem, we can try that. Uh, if the patient is not happy to consider medical treatment and is still having a significant symptoms, um, uh, I will keep a low threshold to go ahead with uh, flexible cystoscopy to assess the urethra, bladder, neck, uh, and the bladder. Okay, you said the receptor for tamsulosin is alpha 1A and you want to change to alpha -zuzin. In which way alpha -zuzin is different? 
because alpha zosin is uh, less specific than tamsulosin, so the sexual side effect, mainly lack of uh, emission uh, of the semen, uh, is less with alpha zosin and other alpha blocker, uh, unlike tamsulosin and solidosin. Okay. He is trying alpha zosin and uh, he is not very pleased and he wants something to be done. He is not uh, convinced that he is going to take this alpha zosin for long term being an young 45 year old man. What other options he has? So in this case, um, <coughs> we need to go toward um, surgical treatment. So I want first to um, do a flexible cystoscopy. Uh, to assess his prostate, to assess the, his urethra, bladder, neck, and the bladder. And also, I will do at the same time transrectal ultrasound to assess the prostate size. Okay. His transrectal ultrasound prostate size is 22 cc. Flexible cystoscopy showed a normal urethra. Prostate is not very occlusive as far as the later lobes are concerned, but he has high bladder and neck. Bladder has grade 1 trabaculations just in the process of forming there are few areas of raised ridges but uric orifice is normal <coughs> so in this patient i think uh, the hypertrophied bladder neck is a cause of his symptoms so he may benefit from bladder neck incision however in accordance with the eiu guideline this patient uh, need to have a urodynamic study before any surgical intervention so i will arrange for him to have a urodynamic study can you explain that uh, EAU guidelines supporting urodynamics in this patient? What other patients you will do urodynamics before intervention? So, uh, patients who are aged less than 50 or above uh, 80, uh, patient uh, with, who failed the previous uh, bladder outlet uh, obstruction surgery, uh, patient with significant post void residue more than 300 mil, uh, patient with significant symptoms. Uh, and a flow rate more than 15 uh, mil uh, per second. Uh, patients who are unable to uh, void more than uh, 150 mil uh, in the flow rate, and also patients known to have uh, a, neuro, um, um, a neurological disease. Okay. Urodynamic showed a filling phase is normal. There is good sensation and maximum sensation at the correct period. There is no signs of any detrusor instability. Voiding phase showed high detrusor pressures and he is a high pressure voider. He showed increased bladder outlet obstruction and bladder contactility index. So how are you going to plan? So there is a, a high bladder outlet obstruction index in yes. this patient. Yes. Uh, so this patient is uh, obstructive by urodynamic uh, terms. So I expect that the patient will uh, have a benefit in 90% of the cases uh, following uh, relief of his bladder outlet obstruction. So um, in taking into consideration the age of the patient and the size of the, of, the, of the size of the prostate and the anatomical appearance of his prosthetic urethra, um, I will offer him a, a bladder neck uh, incision, which will give him a good symptomatic relief uh, with a low side effect profile. So how will you do bladder neck incision? What is the reason behind his pathology? Uh, the reason why he had only median lobe enlargement. Or, yeah. Why uh, is that? Because uh, the growth of the prostate in benign uh, prosthetic hyperplasia, the growth of the prostate may not be universal. Uh, so sometimes the growth mainly may affect the lateral lobes or may affect the median lobe or sometimes it is just a trilobal uh, enlargement. Okay, so how will you do bladder neck incision? So bladder neck incision, uh, I will inform him that uh, this is uh, a day case procedure and the general spinal anesthesia, I will explain to the patient uh, the risk benefit and the alternative and support my consent with the bounce leaflet. So in a properly anesthetized uh, prepared patient WHO uh, checklist of lactic antibiotic and then I will go with the resectoscope, check the prosthetic urethra, the bladder landmark and then I will do two incision um, uh, with the Collins knife if, uh, from at 5 and 7 o'clock uh, from the bladder neck uh, down to the Vero Montana. Okay, is there any other options available for him other than bladder neck incision? Uh, the patient is not keen to consider a bladder neck incision, which is recommended uh, by NICE guideline for prostate less than 30. 
and then uh, I will consider I will discuss with the patient uh, uh, other options uh, I I guess this patient is relatively young so he may be uh, interested in uh, preserving his ejaculation so I will offer him some of the minimally invasive procedures to preserve the ejaculation uh, like I tend or uh, Urolift uh, or uh, resume I am aware that most of these procedures approved by NAS guideline for a prostate between 30 to 80, uh, but I think this patient uh, will be a candidate for this as well. Um, if the patient uh, ejaculation is not a priority, then I can offer him a TRP. Okay, we'll stop there. Um, again, a nice starting stage investigations, preparing everything is fine except for uh, terminology like uh, palpation of nodule in the urethra. I understand you m are having the urethral stricture in your mind, but instead mm. of stating it as a nodule, you can state it as like a scar in the urethra or any irregularity in the corpus spongiosum. Uh, nodule is not a very correct demonstration of a stricture of urethra. It will be more of scarring rather than actual nodule, but it's only a change of terminology, nothing wrong in that. Uh, yeah. Nodule is more for like a prostatic nodule, suspicious nodule in the prostate, like that. More of a malignant thing, while scar is more of a benign thing. Yeah. Um, I'm not very convinced with you doing a truss ultrasound measurement, not very commonly performed, but I understand sometimes if you want to do any minimally invasive surgery, it's better to have a formal transrectal ultrasound. I, I agree with you, but uh, just be careful when you are presenting that because I don't think it's very commonly used unless for any proper study or etc. Just yeah. in the end, when I am discussing the other options you brought in correctly, I didn't resume Eurolift, but you also mentioned TURP. TURP has no role in a patient with just blood and neck obstruction alone, high blood and neck alone. High blood and neck and median lobe are entirely different. So median lobe is just a trilobar enlargement of the prostate while bilobar later lobes will cause the kissing lobe causing the obstruction which is not present in our patient and the median lobe is something which is growing above the bladder neck into the bladder as one of the nodule because there is a good space available for the extra nodule to grow. Otherwise median lobe is just a prostate while high blood and neck is anatomically not a prostate it is just hypertrophy of the blood and neck due to increased adrogenic action the blood and neck is hypertrophied and uh, that's why you are just incising the blood and neck and when you are incising if there is a good amount of tissue between your two incisions you can use a TURP loop to remove the tissue to create a nice incision it is not equivalent to a median lobe resection. So median lobe is different pathophysiologically compared to high blood and neck. And so when, when you are bringing in Eurolift, just be careful. Nice guideline says it is uh, only for patients between 50 to 80 years, the May 2021 latest nice guidelines. Previously, uh -huh. uh, it is accepted up to 100 cc, but now the latest one says 30 to uh, 50 to it is 50, age of 50 mainly. Size is okay. Size is quite, as you said, 30 to 80 is a good. This patient I mentioned as 45 years. You can do, but patients should be aware that uh, the nice guidelines advises you lift only after 50 years. I thought of taking you to the next question. Um, how will you do Eurolift in a patient with high blood and neck? You can discuss the 4D technology where uh, technique where you can keep four Eurolift clips in the four corners. There are some surgeons who do blood and neck incision also at the same time, but once there is blood and neck incision, it can cause retrograde ejaculation. If the patient is quite feels important to maintain anti-grade ejaculation, it's better to do only the 4D <coughs> technique. Blood and neck incision will jeopardize his anti-grade ejaculation. You have correctly mentioned tamsulosin causing absence of emission. Also try to mention the word an ejaculation. Uh, try to use the correct terminologies. So, an ejaculation for tamsulosin while bladder neck incision will cause retrograde ejaculation. Okay. Any other things you want to add before we conclude? Uh, no, thank you very much. It was very nice, very helpful session. <coughs> Good. Thank you.
Yeah, purposefully I picked up the situations which we haven't discussed before because we discussed BPH at least two to three times for your batch itself with various other trainees. So I just want to touch a little bit uh, rare scenarios but at the same time not losing the predominant uh, main pathway etc. I hope it was useful. Very useful. I, and I, I, I'm uh, hoping that we have more of this uh, unusual twist and scenario. Yeah. Um, rather than repeating the, the previous one, yeah. which covered everything before. Yeah, thank you very much. Good. Very good. Have a nice weekend. I will send you another date for early next week um, in a day or two, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.